know, like I said, before she died, she was she was the person I would go to to speak about everything and anything. She would she was a listener. She would give me the advice, and she was she didn't. Yeah, she could speak. She could listen for years for that for hours to me. So mm-hmm. she was a wonderful mum. And that's another thing, George. When my mum died, people say your mum's died. But it wasn't just my mum. She was probably my best friend as well. Wow, that's a, that's a nice thing to say. Now I agree with you about grannies because I grew up with my granny living with us as well, and uh, she she really basically reared us. And they they are quite wise these grannies. How important is it, as you said, you know, for people to look out for older folks like myself? <laughs> yeah, like I, said, I think I think the you know to me the family is everything, and as a Christian as a Christian father, I believe family was designed by God, and it's designed that you know for me I, I'm a, I'm an era now that I was looked after by my dad. Now I'm a dad. And I look after my kids that I have, they're grown up. And obviously when I'm older, I just pray that the the relationship I have with them and, and invest it in them, they're, they're going to replicate that, you know. Mm-hmm. And it's all about no, relationship. I remember with my granny uh, on a Sunday, my mum and dad used to be at the football match and I'd be home with my granny and she'd make me a cup of Barbara, not Barbara, uh, it was actually an Oxo cube. <laughs> oh, so, did, yeah. well, you said your granny told you stories. What kind of stories did she tell you? You know, George, if you can picture it in the, in the late seventies with the the old living rooms with the the, with the fancy pattern and wallpaper and yes, it was, her, it, was her, it was her armchair. She was the you know she was the domain. It's my chair. Nobody sat in it. She actually she had a she had three she had three pictures. She had a picture of Elvis Presley beside her. She had a picture of Muhammad Ali. Wow. The, then she had a picture of a, of a Rangers player. You won't know him. Like his name was Derek Parlane, but. That was her three kind of. I know Jerry Carlin, Yes, I've heard of him. Yeah, yeah that's the three. Men, that's the three men she loved. But she she told me lots of stories about her own upbringing. Uh, my grandfather, because of the mm-hmm. football team, and I did I didn't know him, George. So I have no recollection of my grandfather mm-hmm. out with my granny's stories. Now you did say, of course, there were as you're growing up. Of course, there was occasions when your mum and dad didn't get on, and you'd, you'd hear the shouting in the kitchen. How did that make you feel as a kid when you came home to that? After time, you got used to it in some strange way, but when you first heard it, you know, we, you didn't talk about it in the late 70s, the word anxious or, or kind of mm-hmm. your, your, your stress levels. It wasn't spoken about, but probably then it was kind of kind of similar, like a first stage of trauma coming into it, you know, but you, right. you dealt with it yourself. That was the unfortunate mm-hmm. thing. Well, apart from that, of course, um, the boys were getting seemed to be a bit of an escape for you. You seemed to like it quite a lot, the boys were getting. When you were oh, there. Well, George, it, it, it ticked all the boxes for me because you, you did you did sport. You were with your friends on a Friday night. School was over. So that's mm-hmm. the time the week had finished, and you were looking forward to it for Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. Boys Brigade. You thought Friday night. Here we go, and I just loved it. It was a release in every way. Now you said you mentioned about it, you felt it was a safe place. What made you think it was a safe place? Well, for, for my own for my own experience, it was a safe place because they created a culture that you felt safe, mm-hmm. and uh, you know you, you knew that you were you had officers that were in charge of you, and the way they they because they knew you as well because you stayed in Stromness. It wasn't like they came from different areas. They gotcha. you did life with these guys, so you knew them. So the relationship was crucial again, like with faith. You trusted them. Mm-hmm. That's how I felt safe. I have to ask you, what is the game called British Bulldogs? What kind of game is that? You never did that? No, never did it. Well, British Bulldogs, is, British Bulldogs is basically banned now because of health and safety. Right. So basically, you can picture, picture an old gym hall. You've got two sides. Yeah. And, and you've got a catcher in the middle. But you, you're, right. you're, and you're running like that, so you've got to bash the guy out the way. All right. <laughs> so, if, he ca- if he catches you, you're, you're against the rest of them. So you could be left on your own and then everybody's up against you. So that's British Bulldogs. And, and another one was called Hopping Bulldogs. That was the same, but you're hopping. <laughs> and did you ever get knocked over yourself? Oh, or injured? Yeah. yeah. Lots of time, yeah. I know. I, the Boy Scouts for me was a bit like the, the, the brigade for you because we, we used to box in that one, actually. <laughs> I used oh, to hate yeah. the box. Hit the box. No, we, got, we, did, we did get boxing that youth club. Youth club was boxing, actually. We got mm-hmm. a couple of times the army came up and showed us boxing. So were you, were you a good at two shoes growing up then? Not really. No. 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 So, but but it, because, 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 because the attitude in the world of religion, they would call it religion, not religion, because they look at you, if you mention the word church in Orkney or that, it's called you're a goody two shoes because you go to a. Right. 
you know, the cup. The cup. <laughs> now you said the, 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 the prayers and stuff like that. How did you feel when they started on all the prayer stuff and everything? How did that make you feel? You know, thinking looking back, I thought it was weird, but then because it was repetitive, you just mm -hmm. got used to it. It was right, it was formal rather than you experience something. I only really experienced my first kind of holy spirit, you'd say, would be in the boys' brigade officer's home on a Friday night when he mm -hmm. took the Qatar out and you know spoke in a language that we all could understand. So right. Did you ever pick up an instrument yourself later on in life? It's weird because my dad was a saxophone player uh, right. and he played the and he played the accordion. But it's, it's bypassed me, unfortunately. I tried the trumpet, I tried the guitar, but I'm not musical. But my youngest daughter, uh, she learned, she self taught herself guitar when COVID came. Right. She learned, she learned guitar through COVID, so it's skipped a generation. Well, funny you should say, because I actually did play the trumpet and I do play the guitar, so <laughs> we're similar yeah. in that direction. <laughs> now, of course, there came a moment in your life, when it was a bit of a tragic moment, when your, your, uh, your granny went to hospital, but you never saw her again. No. No, was that how traumatic was that for you? Looking back, the the era we lived in, it just she was taking the hospital, so I just thought oh, I'll wait till she comes home. I won't go and see her because she'll she's she'll she'll be out soon with a broken hip. But obviously she's caught pneumonia, so I still you still look back and think I should have went to see her, but mm -hmm. you can't take that back, you know. Mm -hmm. And you said she gave you your first Bible as well. Yeah, 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 yeah. Did you ever read it? I did. It was a, it was an old King James, which I couldn't understand at the time with the old language. But I did try and I did try and read it. Yeah, because it was in English. Is that what you mean? <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Probably. Now, of course, you also thought the story of the, of the boys who came in and uh, they were, uh, you know, talking about Jesus, but they, they said they didn't want to, and there was a car crash. Okay. But I think you know I still I still hear it to this day, and I think a lot of people think like that because. Often at a young age, you know yourself, George, many years ago, young young men, we think we're immortal, we think life yeah. we're strong, you know, we're physically strong, we're we're in good shape, nothing's gonna nothing's gonna touch us. So yeah. I think everybody thinks but to this day we don't know this could be our, our last moment on earth. Live Stories Worldwide is broadcast live every Monday night at 8 p.m. UK time. We broadcast on YouTube, Facebook, and StreamYard. Why not join us every Monday night at 8 p.m. UK time for Life Stories Worldwide. Speak to us here at Life Stories Worldwide. You can simply by dialing plus 44-7943-550287. Call us now. So you said there uh, at the time they said this. Ah, oh, there's plenty of time to, to accept Jesus. What would you say to somebody today who said that to you? Plenty of time to accept Jesus. Well, I would say we're not promised tomorrow. That's for mm -hmm. sure. None of us are promised tomorrow, and you know, uh, I think every day is a gift. Yeah. And I, as you get older, every 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 moment becomes a gift as you get older. And, we are, we're vulnerable, we're fragile as human mm -hmm. beings, but we don't know tomorrow. So I think, take God with tomorrow. Don't leave it till it's too late. Excellent. So anyway, you moved on, you went back to Aberdeen, and but um, all of a sudden you were out drinking, smoking, partying. How did that happen for, for a, a goody two-shoes like yourself? <laughs> no, it's just, a, like I said, I didn't want to leave the island for a start. So it was a rebellion towards my dad kicking in, thinking I shouldn't even be here. Mm -hmm. So uh, and then obviously the job I had I didn't like it. So we, the weekend was my would, would be my safe place then if that makes sense. But it wasn't a safe place. What did you work at? What did what you work at that time? You said you didn't like your job. I was an apprentice butcher. Right. Yeah. And you like okay, fair enough. So yeah, you went out drinking, and um, at that time, of course, then your mum died. Yes. Yeah. So that's you know it's a. Uh, I, I, it's funny because I'm 54 now and I was looking at somebody I know and they were speaking to their mum the other day and they're the same age as me and I'm thinking, they've had their mum. I've mm -hmm. not had a mum really in my life for like over 30 years. Right. You know, and I felt a bit, I kind of think, I th sometimes you do think life's unfair and it is. And those who have lost their mums at a young age, it's it's horrible. And again, it's your mum's, your mum's in everything, really. Mm -hmm. You know, and I think people that don't have their mums 
Did they miss him every day? Actually, yeah. Uh, my mom actually went missing in 1977. Never to be seen went again. Missing? Went missing, yeah. Oh. So that's part of my story, but that's another thing. It's time for your story. Anyway, it came to the time because um, you were out clubbing and you met your lovely wife and still with her. Yeah, we're still together. We're still together. Yeah. And uh, as you said, God brought the two broken hearts together. Yeah. I believe, yeah. you know, I believe without God, we're all broken. And and even, you know, when we do get, when we do give a life to the God, we're still, I think he's made this, he's the, he's the, he's the potter, we're the clay. There's still mm -hmm. cracks in us. There's still cracks in us all the time, but the Holy Spirit is, is, is fills these cracks. And she, your relationship with God is so crucial that he has to, he, it's only him that completes you. Yeah, exactly. Now you said, of course, uh, that you came to know Jesus, uh, but you made, you made the statement that we said, God is in the detail. Explain what that means to you. God is in the detail. Well, can I, I said before, George, I, I wrote my book. Excellent. That way, well, your anchor hold. And I wrote that last year. My wife wrote a book as well. So I believe a life, like you're doing here, a life story is your testimony will, will touch many people. But in the detail, mm -hmm. I, I believe that God's, God's in, God's outside of our, of our time. We've got a certain amount of time on earth. He's, He's before us. He's into our future as well. And he, and this book here, that's that's the details of Ricky Bain, the chapters in the book, and and he he's 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 my detail and everything I've done in my life and everything I will do, he knows I'll do it before I do it. Mm -hmm. and so what, what's your voice? What, what's your voice book called? Now you're asking. <laughs> my 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 journey back to the shack. Okay, very good. That's my wife, that's my wife's book. My journey back to the shack. So how did you both become so literary in, in your latter years? We're both not. Joanne's dyslexic and I'm not the best either. So, but you know what? If you look, if you look at the Bible, let's look at the Bible. Who did, who, mm -hmm. does, who did God use in the Bible? It was often the least. Yeah. It was often, it was often, it was often those that people didn't rate and you know, God wants the glory. So yeah. and in, our, in, in our books, I mean, Joanne and myself, we often speak about, that the, the the church at the moment doesn't need more kind of uh, line managers as such, like the world it needs more fathers and mothers. Mm -hmm. that's, that's quite true, actually. And where are the books available, please, for anyone who wants to buy them? Amazon. Amazon. Both of Amazon. Okay, Amazon. that's great. Uh, so, but the one I wanted to ask you about the bit you said you you you, um, you came to a very terrible time, of course, when you tried to commit suicide. What? On, how how did you get to that point? Oh well, again, it was the you know, I, I believe that was that was a, a point as well going way back for, you know, from I think even for, I didn't deal with my granny's death, I didn't deal mm -hmm. with uh, my mum's death. That was the big one, and because I was drinking so much, uh, it was it was a perfect, you know, it was a cocktail, and I believe that I was in, a, in such a dark place, and I believe that I believe in good and evil. I believe that God wants to get hold of your life. I believe we've got a destiny. Mm -hmm. in him but the, the enemy wants to, to stop our destiny and he'll do anything if i took my own life at that time i, be, I wouldn't have five children true you know and i was just in such a dark place because and i was full of self i was full of self-pity i was mm -hmm. full of it's just it's, nobody likes me nobody cares for me uh, i just want to leave this this i was in pain mm -hmm. and i was broken like i said i was broken and that was that was my way out and how do you reflect on that now, um, as a Christian? As a Christian man, you know, uh, I have to. I, I, I embrace my journey now. Uh, mm -hmm. The the reflection I have, and that's why I know at this, mo this moment in time, there's probably many men even contemplating it. Mm -hmm. There's like, and you know what the enemy does? He isolates you. So that time, I I, I wasn't in a relationship with nobody. I wasn't in a relationship with God, first and foremost. I wasn't in the best relationship with my dad. I was just drinking with acquaintances, with the real friends. I don't know. You have to ask the question. I don't know. So I was I was a perfect target to be taken out. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now, you know the old saying, of course, it takes two to make a marriage, the wife and the mother-in-law. But yeah. uh, your mother-in-law had a very big impact on you, you said. She was a Christian. She still does. You know, you know what? She's, like I say about the Bible, she's a Bible teacher. Mm -hmm. uh, she like I say, if you look at a Bible, it looks all old and tattered. It looks well written, and uh, she lives it, she breathes it, and she inspires me. And you know, 
there's many jokes you could have about mother-in-laws, but I won't say one tonight. Yeah. So uh, just, uh, she's watching this, Jackie. Yeah, you're awesome, and uh, you've had a real impact in my life. And I thank you for everything you've done uh, for me. Thank you. Now you mentioned about walking in faith. Does that mean you left your job and went to, as an evangelist in faith? Yeah, you could call it that. I actually went into a Christian Vision for Men, if I'm allowed to mm -hmm. say that on here, CVM. We we'll actually have a big gathering this this weekend in Swindon, where, okay. where over where over two thousand guys will meet, in in, to, in big, big tents. And uh, I love I love what they do. They're evangelists, and uh, I took a big step of faith in George. I probably missed out, but at that time I, I used to work in the oil industry. I got paid off in two thousand fifteen. You're right. I took a job labouring with a roofing company, which was hard work. The only good thing about that was the wife enjoyed it because I got a nice tan and I lost a bit of weight, so I looked, <laughs> I looked not too bad. But I knew, I knew this like for the detail. I knew, I knew there's a call in my life from a young age. Mm -hmm. I always, I always battled it. And there was one time I was on top of a roof and I had a safety harness on. And I was trying to reach something and the harness stopped me. It's very easy to subscribe to our YouTube channel, Life Stories at Lunch, to receive notifications of when we are live. Simply click the bell. If you would like to contact us here at Life Stories Worldwide, you can simply by emailing lifestoriesworldwide at gmail.com or visit our website at lifestoriesworldwide.com. I thought, oh, is this, is this, I actually thought, is this it? And I felt the Holy Spirit say to me, you're going to be released very soon. Wow. And, and, that, and that's when I took the step of faith. And it's, you know, it's maybe not worked out the way I thought it would. It never yep. 